Hi, from this lecture, we're going to talk about the fluid mechanics. Fluids is any substance that can flow or deforms under the applied shear stress. This might be a liquid, gas, or the plasma. And the fluid mechanics is a part of the physics, learns the behavior of the fluids at the rest or in the motion, for example, inside the pipes. Over this course, we are, we are not really go deep technically to the fluid mechanics, rather we are going to concentrate more on the conceptual ideas and the applications of the fluid mechanics into the medicine. And learning and understanding the basic laws of the fluid mechanics enables us to model the physiology of the blood circulation. For example, the blood pressure or the blood flow um, in the vessels or in our arteries. Over this lecture, we're going to talk about the types of the flows, like uh, what's a turbulent flow and what's a laminar flow. And also we're going to talk about the blood pressure. And also we're going to talk about the ideal and the real flow. So basically the application of the laminar, the turbulent flow to the blood pressure, it's, it's one of our topics which we are going to discuss today. So the, um, the liquid, the fluids can move, can flow under the, uh, uh, effect of the external forces or the temperature. And the streamlines of the flows are going to show us the directions of the flow. Um, and, and whenever the streamlines are like are flowing parallelly without mixing up, this type of the flow is called the laminar flow. It's basically they are moving parallelly without any mixing, any interaction. So the laminar flow usually happens at the uh, low velocities of the flows. And at the same time, there's another type of the flow, which is called the turbulent flow, where the streamlines of the flows are going to interact with, with, between each other and they're going to mix things up. And usually it happens at the higher velocities. So let's consider an example of the turbulent and the laminar flow. So let's say I've gotten a uh, faucet here. And if I open the water in a, in a smaller velocity, basically the amount of the water which is coming through the pipes is not so much, then we can see type of the uh, laminar flow, right? So the velocity is small, then the streamlines of the water are coming smoothly and slowly. But if I increase the amount of the water which is coming from this faucet, we can see some uh, some turbulence here. So we can see the type of the flow, which is the turbulent flow. So this example reveals some ideas about the behavior or the transition of the turbulent flow into the lamina or the vice versa. For example, we can see that if I increase the amount of the water, um, then the flow can change from the lamina to the turbulent, right? And also this might be logical for you that if you, if you have the turbulent flow and if you just increase the radius or the diameter of the pipe, then the flow becomes more lamina, more smooth. So this is really important concepts. We are going to use this concept in our quantitative analysis later on. So the increasing the amount of the fluid per cross section changes the type of the flow, for example, from lamina to the turbulent and the vice versa. And the radius of the medium also changes the type of the flow. So another, another applications, another uh, place where we can see the two different types of the flows, is might be the blood pressure. So the blood pressure is the uh, amount of the force of the uh, blood against your artery wall. So as you remember, the pressure itself is the, uh, is the amount of the force which is applied to some area, right? So as you increase the force, then the pressure is increased. As you increase the area, then the pressure is decreased, right? So basically the pressure is proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the area. So there are two types of the uh, blood pressure, the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. And the systolic pressure actually, it's a, it's a higher number. It measures the, um, uh, the, the force of blood being pushed around your body when your heart contracts. We're not really going uh, deep into the anatomy. You just need to know that there are two types of the blood pressure. One is systolic and one is diastolic at the stage. And the diastolic pressure, it's a lower number. It measures the force um, 
when your heart is at rest between the beats. Um, for us, it's, it's, it's important. So let's look how, it, how we usually measure the blood pressure. So this is the typical picture, how we measure the blood pressure. We usually put some cuff here. So here is this cuff, we, which we stress, uh, uh, which we put the press, some part of your hand, and then we hear the sound, right? So let's let discuss how the sound actually changes and how the flow types are changing. So let's say this is the part of your hand where the blood streamlines are flowing uh, as, a, as a lamina flow. And whenever we put the cuff and we stress this a bit, so that there is, no, so we stress this so high so that there is no flow at all that's coming around, right? And uh, for us, it's really important to understand what kind of sound we are going to hear here. So if the pressure of the cuff is even higher than the systolic pressure, then we don't hear anything because there is no flow. So we say that there is, there is a silence and there is no blood flow at all. But if we relax this a bit, so if we relax the cuff a little bit, so that the pressure of the cuff is in between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure, then uh, we can hear the oscillating sound because here, probably we can uh, have the flow of the blood, but this flow is now going to be not the laminar flow, but the turbulent flow. So previously, when the pressure was higher than the systolic pressure, that there was no blood flow. Now, when the pressure of the cuff is between the systolic and the diastolic, we can hear some noise, an oscillating sound, and the flow is going to be the turbulent flow here. But if we decrease the pressure so that the pressure is even smaller than diastolic pressure, if we just basically relax the cuff at all, then again, the flow, blood flow is flowing around. And this type of the flow is going to be the lamina flow, and we don't hear the sound again. So again, we're going to have the lamina silence. So for us, it's really important uh, to understand how the flow type is changing even, the, uh, even uh, when we measure the blood pressure. So uh, another important type, uh, type of, the, so another important concepts of the flow, which we need to consider is the ideal flow and the real flow, because um, and, and, and in a theory of the fluid mechanics, we always are going to discuss uh, the concepts and the laws which is uh, applicable for the ideal flow. So there, are t uh, so there is the ideal flow and the real flow. So let's discuss the uh, differences in terms of their characteristics and their properties. So the ideal flow is always lamina, while the real flow, which is, for example, your blood, can be lamina or sometimes the turbulent, right? So we see the example of the, uh, of the real flow when the water is coming out from the faucet, and this might be lamina when the amount of the water is smaller, and when, as you increase the amount of the water per second, then the, uh, the flow type is changing into the turbulent. So another example which differentiates the real flow from the ideal flow is the incompressibility. So the ideal flow is always incompressible. So incompressibility, it means that it has the constant density. So if you remember, the density is the amount of the molecules which is packed into some unit of the volume, right? Into one centimeter cube, for example, right? And this is always the same for the ideal flow. And for the real flow, this might be different, basically. The density for the same centimeter cube might be different. And, and, and one of the other important properties, characteristics of the real flow is the viscosity. So the real flow has the viscosity and the viscosity basically means the thickness of the fluid. So if you got the blood of the honey and put this, uh, put this down and you can see that the honey is going to move slowly, right? So it's viscous, so it has the friction, so it's glue kind of with each other. And the idea of flow, always has, uh, ideal flow is always non-viscous, so it has no friction. So there's the three properties differentiate the ideal flow and the real flow. In our next lectures, we're going to discuss the laws of the fluid mechanics applied to the ideal flow, such a laws as a, as a, as a continuous equations or the Bernoulli equations.